for today's vlog. It's just gonna be a sit down and I'm gonna do a Q&A, which I don't really do these. I think I've done them maybe twice. Once for sure, but I, I think there might have been like a second one that I've done. So I went to my Instagram and asked you guys, you know, what questions you wanted to ask. By the way, I would have done like a really nice cozy fire for you guys, but it's still kind of warm outside. So, you know, there's that. All right, so I did get asked pretty much this, a lot of the same questions um, over and over. So I'll do my best to answer as many as I can because there's like a lot of different questions here. All right, so the first question is, what do you do with all the Dollar Tree items you can't use personally? Plus, I think somewhere down in this list, I also saw someone ask me if I've ever returned anything to Dollar Tree. So I have exchanged things before, but I don't really do that anymore. It's just not really worth the hassle at all. If I have exchanged anything in the past, it was like one or two items here and there, but Dollar Tree doesn't do returns. They only do exchanges and I don't do those anymore. Um, the So then what do I do with all of the Dollar Tree items that I can't use personally? I donate. Obviously my channel on my main channel is all about like the Dollar Tree hauls. I kind of consider myself a personal shopper of sorts. I want to show you guys all the new stuff that's at Dollar Tree. That's just how I've branded my personal account on YouTube. Um, and I, if I could, I would keep everything. Like I love everything I haul. It's just not realistic for me to keep everything. So the things that I don't keep, it gets donated. Then there will be times where I'll also just like kind of hold on to things and I'm like okay I'll check back you know in a month or two and if I haven't used it then that gets donated so there's like a different process to that I got asked does your puppy get and does my puppy and my niece get along well funny that you asked that I'm still kind of unsure about that answer right now Loki has met my niece this was um like two weeks ago so which you know in puppy time that's quite he's developed a lot more since then and he was just I don't know if he was being playful or if he was truly bothered just because she was you know laughing she had a high pitch she was kind of running around and it's just that was really Loki's first time kind of engaging socially um you know because really for the first few weeks of his life um after I had him at eight weeks, he was with me all alone. Like my daughter didn't even come into the picture until almost a month later, right? She came at like a Thanksgiving and I had him October 28th. So, um, so yeah, I can't say, you know, right now, you know, if that was just a thing with him and my niece, but the neighbors played with him and he was completely calm and chill. Another question that I got asked, a lot of is do I ever plan on getting married so there's actually going to be several other questions that I'll answer that's kind of related to this I know I got questions about being single am I seeing anyone um all of those questions and the answer is am I seeing anyone no do I ever plan on getting married no that this is a really difficult question for me to talk about without this turning into like an hour-long video but w could I ever get married? I'm not saying it couldn't happen. I've just, so I've been in a lot of relationships and I've also been in relationships where we've lived together. And since then, and me having this long stretch of just being alone, not being committed to anyone, living by myself, I have just reflected back and thought that this has suited me best personally maybe it's just this phase of my life right now that it just works this way I can't speak to my 40 year old self right because you you always hit these milestones and you grow and you change and you change your mind about things and I could change my mind right now in this phase I'm in I don't I'm not seeing anyone and I don't plan on getting married. I just like my life the way it is. Another question that I got asked is, do you think you will move again? Good question. Um, right now, it's not 
any sort of plan. My daughter and I love this house so much. I think that there is a difference between a house and a home and this feels like a home. The last house where my I feel like my YouTube really did a lot of growing, a lot of blowing up, that was more of a house. It never felt like home and we both felt it. We both really kind of felt the same thing. This house just has been magical for us. Maybe one day in the future, it kind of really depends. That question really just kind of I feel like once my daughter finishes college, um, I, yeah, it's just kind of hard to kind of figure out, you know, what season in life we'll both be, where she'll want to be. Not that we have to be together, but if we wanted to, we could. Like, you know, we just, we love being together. So, um, so I, I, yeah, I don't know. But right now, I'm definitely staying put. Another question is, single mom here, how do you get through the lonely moments not having a spouse? So, even though I just said in the previous question that I do not plan on getting married and I'm not seeing anyone, I definitely wanted to read out this question because I, while I am a very private person, so Q and A's kind of are hard for me. I know that sounds like bizarre and contradictory to the fact that I'm doing YouTube and I put myself out in public but that doesn't mean that I feel like I should just put you know I guess everything on blast and just give give everything away I definitely believe that there that it's definitely okay um to have boundaries but I did want to answer this question um it's hard and it's especially it especially gets harder the longer that I've been, you know, alone. Um, and especially with losing Loxie, which I kind of talked about a little bit. I didn't, re you know, losing Loxie was very, very hard, but even harder so because I had invested so much emotionally into her. She was, she was what was loving and gave me love and attention and helped me feel better on my worst days. So losing her broke me because I'm not with anyone and you know as a human I think having human interaction and or just love in general is very very important I think trying to go completely alone without anything I couldn't I don't I couldn't do it because it has put a strain on me with what I've been going through I do keep my circle sorry my dryer and it's gonna go off a second time too, by the way. I do keep my circle, and it's so long. Like my dryer thing is so long, but I do keep my circle very small. Um, but it, I have noticed it has affected me. It's, it's a struggle I'm definitely going through because I know I don't want to be in a relationship, but I'm learning that it might not be realistic to kind of continue at. The pace I'm going through um, but what I try to do is I try to do all the things that make me happy when I'm definitely feeling a little bit more bored and alone whether that's a movie or it's watching someone that I love on YouTube um, as silly as it sounds whenever I discover a new youtuber it makes me so happy so I mean to answer the question technically how do I get through the lonely moments of not having a spouse um, well it's been so long since I've been in a relationship so it's just it's come more normal and natural to me to be alone but like I said the longer I go without someone the more that I'm kind of seeing those like effects, whether it be anxiety or sadness, um, which is just, I, I think a natural human effect to not having that human interaction. Next question, is there a reason you love the Mastiff breed so much? Just curious. Um, so I love lots of dog breeds, so many, they're just, I love pets in general. Um, the reason why 
I went with the same breed. So the very first time, which was Lolly, she was gifted to me for my birthday. And, um, and then when Lolly passed away, I got Loxy. And what I learned through Loxy is that I pair very well with this breed. I think there are certain breeds that aren't for certain people whether the family or children or babies or like whatever it is, I don't think they're for everybody, right? Like you don't want to have an overactive dog that needs all of this energy for someone who's maybe not as active, right? So I feel like it's kind of important to pair the right breed to the right lifestyle, I guess, you know, kind of thing. That's just my own personal belief. Um, and I feel like I know this breed at this point very, very well, and um, and it's a, it's a perfect match. So that's why. But I do love all the other breeds on the planet. I love this question. Who do you think is the most underrated Avenger? Immediately, Captain Marvel. When I watched that movie, I was shook. One, by how good it was, and two, by the fact that I didn't feel like it was as publicized as the other Avengers. Not to mention that Captain Marvel has, in my opinion, the strongest superpower. Like, like who can top Captain Marvel? She was just, she's amazing. Like, she cannot be defeated by anyone. There's, there's not any superhero, any villain that can technically outdo her powers that marvel you know wrote for her so in my opinion captain marvel for sure and if you've never watched the movie watch it and i'm not really kind of into that stuff too much but i mean definitely not like the big fans and like my daughter but i watched that movie and i was just like she's a baddie all right so this question is if not too personal journey to youtube channel and what and how to make it work without a main job so this one's a very interesting question because i definitely feel like i have taken the longer route to making youtube my main job um i think that factors in for several different reasons obviously i can't compare to everyone on youtube but i feel like from what I've seen a lot of people have a spouse have that second income so um and then you know once they kind of get their YouTube off the feet I've also seen like the spouse kind of quit their job and then they'll be part of the YouTube so that definitely makes that transition easier I couldn't do that right I was the only income in the house and you know single mom to my daughter and it was just such a long road not to mention that i just feel like i wasn't always on top of all of the youtube stuff there's also the youtube algorithm which has yeah i it's not like it doesn't favor me that much there's definitely a lot of new channels who come in and they just blow up and it's the youtube algorithm it's so hard to you know kind of get your videos seen you you do you do what you can right then you, you leave it up to youtube and that algorithm so um so it just for whatever reason with you know i obviously didn't have the the same amount of time to put into youtube because i had my full-time job and it was very exhausting i'll tell you it was very exhausting especially because i started really feeling like i was loving youtube so much and i couldn't at the time make it my full-time job so that made it kind of harder too and um once i just made the leap it was very scary for me and actually i probably could have taken the leap to quitting my full-time job a lot earlier than i did maybe like a year before but i was just too scared it was just too scary for me to do it um and then finally i just I dove in and you know here I am let me reread the question make sure um, how to make it work yeah I just feel like 
my situation was a little bit differently. Plus, I don't do things like sponsorships, which is a very big part of YouTube, you know? It's a very big part of social media in general, which anyone can do. You don't just have to do YouTube if you want to make money. You could do Instagram and, and all of these things. And I, I should be, honestly, going down the sponsorship route. It's just, I think the other thing I'm watching myself do is I'm stretching myself too thin with as many releases a week that I do on both my main channel and both this channel, it doesn't give me room to kind of do too much of the business end of things. And it's it's kind of hurting a little bit. So it's gonna be a definite focus for me in 2022. So hopefully that kind of answers your question. Um, I just think it's gonna be a different journey for everybody basically. Um, so it's kind of hard to really say you know, I definitely feel like my journey was the, I, I think I did the hardest, um, but like, there it is. Um, another thing, and I get asked this more than I get asked absolutely anything. What did I do before YouTube? And this is a question that I don't really answer just because I just never wanted to mix the two together. It's just one of those things, it's one of those pieces of information that I've always wanted to just keep private. And at the time, it was just like, you know, it was just not something that I felt like needed to honestly be known. Um, but now, I mean, I was basically in technology. It's very complicated to describe. So in a nutshell, technology. This question says, what's your daughter's major? Is she enjoying school? So, um, True to form, our freshman year when we went to the orientation, they said that on average, you change your major like 10 times, which kind of blew me away, that you would do this before being a junior. Um, my daughter's changed it twice, but to be fair, hers are all very like similar. Like she could have honestly have gone with any of the three, um, but she's technically her major's advertising, so. If I could have dinner with anyone in history, who would it be? Robin Williams. Just straight off the bat. I mean... I love this man. I love this man. Like, he is... He... Oh, the joy just... He's... Robin Williams. Oh, like, there's just so many that I could list here. Um, Lucille Ball, Vivian Vance, I would love, 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 you know, just like kick it, kick it at dinner with the Golden Girls. Um, obviously because like that's what I watch all the time, but also like, oh, Loki's under the, sorry, he's under the tripod. The next question is, well, she knows who she is. When are you coming to visit me? All you gotta say, just just say the word and I'm there, sweetie. The next question is, does my daughter enjoy decorating as much as you do? I don't believe so. Not as much as I do. I don't think that's like where she's at in her life right now. I feel like in the early 20s, um, it's probably most likely not like on their radar, but I bet she's about to probably hit that phase where decorating is going to be a lot of fun for her. Okay, two questions that kind of go together. I know you said you grew up in Brazil. Do you speak Portuguese? And then the question was, have you always lived in Texas? So no, I have not always lived in Texas. I came here when I was about seven years old. Um, so I grew up going to schools in Texas, elementary, middle school, high school, and still here, you know, about to be 40. Um, I did grow up in Brazil for probably most of my, from being born to like seven years old, um, was there with my father. And yes, I spoke Portuguese. And no, I do no, I no longer speak Portuguese. Unfortunately, when I came here, I had to be an ESL um, in first grade. So I was learning English and it just dropped out of my radar because my family actually here wasn't speaking it. I spoke it. My father spoke it, my mother spoke it, but like my grandparents who raised me, they didn't speak it. They spoke Italian. So, um, and the, I did get another question, which was, do I speak any other languages? Yes, Italian. 
just not Portuguese. Another question I got asked a lot in here was about my mom, my dad, why do I mention my brother more? So kind of questions like that. So my brother is actually here in Dallas with me. Um, I also have aunts and uncles here as well. Um, I probably mention my brother more because he's my best friend. He is my person. Um, I talk to him multiple times a day. I mean, sometimes we do go like days, but like we're always just consistently in sync. And yeah, he's just like my favorite person. Um, so it's probably why you like hear me mention him more. And again, because he's here. So you'll hear me say things like I'm going to my brother's or this or that because he's here. Mom and dad are not here. My dad lives in Italy and my mom lives in Georgia. So you just don't really hear about them. I would like to see my dad more, unfortunately, especially like with, you know, everything that's kind of going on, uh, traveling overseas is just not in the books for me but I do wish I could see him more. And so in terms of my parents, yes, I do talk to both of them. I've had completely different relationships with both of them. And I don't definitely don't want to sit here and air out all of like the dirty laundry. You know, I've, I've mentioned before that like my mom and I have had our struggles. We've probably had like, I've had my most rockiest relationship with her out of just kind of anybody else. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I do talk to both both of my parents. You know, my daughter loves my mom. They have a very close relationship. Like the whole family, we have such a good like family unit. I just don't mention absolutely everything. You know, there's just sometimes there's things where I'm just like, I wouldn't really vlog them. So that's probably why you don't hear about them or all the details all the time. Like you would maybe like with KK and baby J. Loki snoring right here. So if you hear that, that's what it is. You know, like I'm not gonna pick up the camera and like show my aunt and uncle that I see often or my brother, you know, and things like that. Um, especially when like social media isn't like a big thing in their lives. Like I just feel like it would be very disrespectful. So that's why you don't see or hear me talk about that. But you'll hear me talk about my brother just because he's in my life the most. Um, see him often and yeah, so hopefully that answered your guys' questions. Jay asked me, if money was no object, what kind of car would you buy? That's a, f oh, I know the answer actually. Uh, I, Ford Expedition, I love those cars and I know, I, I feel like there's this stigma where if you're just one person, you can't have anything that's big, you can't have anything that's spacious. Um, I'm not like a fan of that. <laughs> to be honest, but I'm, I feel like I'm diving off. Um, actually another question I was asked was what's my biggest pet peeve. That's not my biggest pet peeve, but like, that's kind of one of them. But in all honesty, I would just want a Ford Expedition. Um, I, I just have my car, it's paid off and I like not having a car payment. So that's probably the only reason why I don't have a Ford Expedition, but it's like a goal. It's like a, in the future for me. Um, so, and with a big car to fit this big doggy, I mean, you will be big. You're little now, but you will be very big. I feel like most people will probably answer like a Ferrari or Lamborghini, but your girl just said a Ford Expedition. But P.S. They're kind of really expensive. I'm just like, wait, what? This question's hilarious. How do you respond to guys who DM you for a date? Girl, they're not, they're not up in my DMs. There's nobody. There's nobody. I I literally, I feel like I walk out in public and I, for all I know, I could be a ghost and I don't even know it. I mean, we know I'm walking around in the middle of the night moving posters off walls. Maybe I'm not even here. What is my favorite time of the day? I love this question because I actually don't know if I know the answer. I feel like um, I'm probably more of an evening, late afternoon, getting into that evening phase. I really love that, but yeah, I'm probably more of an evening person, but I do like mornings too. But I guess if I, yeah, favorite, probably the evening. I think there's just something about lamps and twinkle lights and the ambiance of it that I just really like. Favorite animated film? This is a really good question too because I'm actually not a fan of animation. Like I do get 
I get how cute they are and I've watched some of them, but I, I never truly want to watch them a second time. Um, I think they're great the first time, but it's not something like I want to watch on repeat. I definitely watch 80s movies on repeat. They just are the best feel good movies for me. But favorite animated film, I really fell for Loki's right here. So I'm really sorry. I really fell for The Grinch, the animation one that just came out not too long ago. I love Monsters, Inc. The whole storyline uh, on that I thought was genius. Um, and uh, is that it? Oh, Wreck-It Ralph. I just watched that and I bawled my eyes out and I fell in love with that little animation. I couldn't believe it. I even told my daughters like this beats Monsters, Inc. for me. So number one favorite is Wreck-It Ralph. If you were born an animal instead of a human, what animal would you want to be and why? I think probably a horse. Um, I don't know. I just think there's something so majestic about them. I think I think there is something very just amazing that's not talked about enough like horses no energy they sense energy everything about them is energy just the way that they can sense weather there's just so much about them that I feel like is truly just beautiful um and they can go really fast I don't know I just I feel like I would probably be a horse this question is where did do you get your inspiration for decorating? You have a natural talent. Thank you so much, but I definitely do not feel like I have a natural talent. I feel like it was when Liz from Traditions by the Seasons came into my life when you guys told me about her channel that I really started to see decorating from a completely different perspective. So I, yeah, it, it was really Liz to be honest, but I also get a lot of my inspiration from like Pinterest and Instagram accounts. I, it's really hard for me to sometimes put things together. So it's really, I need to like see a good visual sometimes. And then I then kind of translate that into like, I guess my own version. This question is from Cindy. Do you miss going into work? If so, what do and don't you miss about it? I absolutely miss nothing about it other than I liked what I did, but I didn't like going in. I didn't like the corporate part. I didn't like the meetings. I, mm, it just was not for me. I definitely feel like, and I've always felt this way actually, even before YouTube was created, I've just always knew that just the nine to five just never aligned up with me or my soul. It just didn't work for me my daughter she's definitely like looking towards a nine to five corporate type job and like she, i feel like she'll really thrive in that she like really loves the idea of that um i think it works for some people and i think it doesn't work for some people and it just really in the end didn't work with me it clashed with me a lot um but i did love what i was doing so um yeah, but all the other stuff, absolutely not. I can't tell you the amount of times, like last minute meetings, it was very stressful. I worked under very stressful time, like time sensitive projects that were like turning around weekly. It was just, oh my gosh, I do not miss anything about, no. I worked on accounts that were millions and millions of dollars, projects that were millions of dollars. So it was a lot of pressure. It was a lot of responsibility. And I do actually work well under pressure. I just don't like to, <laughs> if that makes sense. Like, it's just, I felt like it was very conflicting with my personality. Um, I definitely like to be my own boss i guess you could say this is really sweet not a question just wanted to tell you you are amazing strong do it all woman you make women proud thank you so much for saying that i feel like i don't know if anybody else if this is like something everybody else feels too but i don't ever i never think people think those things of me so whenever it's said it's just truly shocking to me so Thank you so much. Okay, now we're getting into some good stuff. 
If a celebrity came to your door to take you to dinner, who would that be? I know a lot of you are probably going to think Peter Mullark. No. Honestly, the reason why I keep Peter Mullark alive is just it's such an old inside joke on YouTube that I just feel like it's tradition to kind of keep Peter alive throughout all of this. But 1000%. If he came knocking at my damn door, you better bet I'm in full hair, makeup, glam. I am not in tights. I'm not in leggings. I'm not in jeans. I am in the cutest dress you'll ever see me in. I am working it. And sweetie, that would be Adam Driver, aka Kylo Ren from Star Wars. When I tell you I would get married for that man. Yes. He, if, yes. Yes. He's, I think he's already married, so no, but yes. I wouldn't decline a dinner date with Tom Hardy either. But actually, while we're here, I have been like, I don't know why I feel the need to say this, but I don't understand the Tom Holland thing. <laughs> I don't understand it. I don't see, I know beauty's in the eye of the beholder, but I just don't see why everyone thinks he's just over, everyone's over the moon and your girl's not seeing it. Yeah, so a lot of these again are about my parents. Are you close with your parents? Are your parents alive? Is your daughter's dad in her life? Um, so my daughter's father's not in her life. So there's that. Really kind of never was, but his side of the family, she still talks to them. So she has her grandma and you know, so so there's that, but, but no, she, she doesn't talk to her father. So there's that. Um, so I already mentioned my parents. Yes, they're alive. Um, I was asked, do you have any other siblings besides your brother? It's a very, also a very good question. The answer is yes, I do. I have a half brother and I don't know if this counts, but I had a stepsister. My father divorced his second wife. So, um, my mom was his first. He's only been married twice and he was with her since I, since before I was 16. I don't really know when they first kind of got together, but I know when I was 16, they had my half brother. So I'm 16, 17 ish years older than my half brother. So actually, he is closer in age to my daughter. Um, so he lives in Italy and uh, stepsister as well. And yes, I talk to my half brother actually quite often. All right, so my biggest pet peeve. I feel like you don't really know the answer to this unless it's happening like but there is one that does come straight to the top of my head and it is the stop sign situation <sighs> I got a woosah before I say it because I truly it truly baffles me I don't understand why somebody who gets to the stop sign well before you do they don't go they won't go until you have arrived to your stop sign and then they go it's like i i truly don't understand that i don't that's not how stop signs work it's not let's wait for everybody to arrive and then we'll all go when we're supposed to no you go you stop the appropriate amount of time and then you go um, if you do arrive at the same time, maybe the laws differ in different states, but I know that you're supposed to yield to the right if you happen to get there at the same time. Yes, I am making hand gestures because this truly, y'all, this gets under my skin. Like, I will be far before I even get to the stop sign. I see a car, he pulls up, car pulls up and waits until I get to the stop sign. I'm just like, what, what are you doing? And then I have to wait for him to go because I need to go. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, <sighs> that one gets me. That one gets me. It's unnecessary. I don't know why waiting for me. I, I'm, I imagine it's probably like, you don't want them to maybe like run the stop sign or you, you know what I'm saying? But like, Mm, it doesn't need to be that complicated. Do people recognize you in person? This question's crazy to me because one, I don't expect for somebody to ask me this because I do not think that I am even on that level to be recognizable, to be any sort of anything, I guess. I don't know. It's just, I know I'm on YouTube and yes, I've had people come up to me like in Dollar Trees and be like, oh, I watch your videos. So the answer is yes, but... I just, 
I don't, you know what I mean? Like, I don't even know, like, it's such a crazy concept to me because I don't think I am so big that I could be recognizable in public, I guess you could say.